Hello, Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter. Today we are going to look at my M. Graham watercolor set. I purchased these paints in the late 90s. They were brand new to my local art store. Here's a swatch of them. That's pretty prettier to look at than my old grungy palette. Um, and I was in the market for some artist quality paints. I was kind of, a, no, I won't say I was a starving artist. I owned a studio downtown where I taught art lessons. And I was also, um, I had just uh, resigned as an art director at a nonprofit, so I was a little bit established, I guess. And I had been teaching with Cotman Paints. I had a few tubes of Windsor and Newton. I just had kind of a mishmash. And I wanted to kind of go whole hog into the art artist grade paints. And these M. Grand paints showed up. They were kind of introductory special. They were 40% off list at my local store. And then I asked the proprietor if I purchased um, a, a certain amount of colors if I could get um, like even better deal on the paint. He said, absolutely, if you bought this much, you can get it for like, I can't remember what it was at the time. I'm thinking like $4 for a 15 ml tube. Um, whatever it was, it was a really good deal. And these other colors I picked, I didn't get any grays uh, or white because, or blacks, because um, especially at the time I didn't use white or black and I don't even use them that much anymore. So if I do need an actual black, I'm usually using it for a particular quality of that pigment and I would just use it from the tube because I don't really need it uh, squeezed out. So this is my palette. This is my favorite palette. You don't see it on camera very often because it's so large that I like to show my mixing space and my colors when I'm doing a demo. And if I have to have, if I want to have this all in frame, then I've got to zoom way out and then you lose the detail. So it's kind of like, um, kind of a compromise, I suppose. But Let's take a look. So first of all, the palette. I bought this palette when I bought the paints. This is a Jones palette, and it is kind of a thin plastic. Um, it's got duct tape all the way around it because the corners were cracking. This type of plastic does get brittle over time, but um, and you can see this is the color that it was, this whiter, brighter palette, but just even like studio lights, sunlight, things like that will yellow this type of plastic here on the inside where it's usually covered up unless I'm painting with it. Because even when I stop for the day, I put the palette on top so I don't get cat hair in it um, or dust or anything. So this is kind of like how it, uh, how the inside is, but you can even see on the edges, the edges of the palette has gotten a little bit yellow. So my recommendation would be if you know you're going to have a studio palette and you're not traveling with it, you may consider investing in a porcelain palette. Uh, I don't know if a porcelain palette would have lasted me this long though, just because when I bought this, I think I, um, I think I was in my apartment. So it was before I bought the house and I've gone from, I've taken this to work and I've taken this to workshops and I don't think a uh, porcelain palette would have been the right choice for me. Uh, but it's something to think about if you're not traveling with it, you can get porcelain palettes about the size. They're pricey, but if you take care of them, they should be fine and they don't move around when you mix with them. Not that I really have that problem with this, but it's just something to, to consider. I think if you want to go with a plastic palette, I'm going to show you what I would recommend. I would recommend the Pike palette. This is even older <laughs> than that one. It looks even grungier, but this one was when I got secondhand. And this, even though it has yellowed uh, and it has cracked, it's it's much more sturdy. It's less brittle and it will hold up quite a bit longer. This is a whole mishmash. I have no idea what's in any of these. Maybe on the top layer of some of these I know what it is, but this is a, this is a hot mess. I love it. Um, and I just put my granulating palette. I like this because I can move this between the two palettes whenever I want to get my kind of um, curated granulating paints into the mix. So that's that. That's my Pike palette. So I would recommend a John Pike palette over a Jones palette just because of the quality of the plastic. Of course, price would be consideration because at the time this was $14 and the pipe palettes I think were um, probably around 30, which I don't th I think they're about best price now. They haven't really gone up, which is kind of, uh, kind of crazy when you think about it. But I think this was made in the USA, Dallas, Texas, and you're probably not going to find something made in the USA anymore. Designed by Jane E. Jones. I like the design of it, um, but I just wish it was that more, um, more robust plastic. But if you do get have a have a palette starting to crack, then just reinforce it with duct tape. Look, I used a fancy duct tape. You don't have to use gray duct tape. There's options. <laughs> All right, so here's a tip I want to share with you. When you have a studio palette like this, take a piece of artist tape or masking tape and write down what is in your wells of color and the pigment information if that is a concern of yours, if you want to know what that is, and then uh, wrap it all the way around. So 
this is really handy because like if I'm just going by sight, I can mix by sight. It doesn't really matter what the name of the color is, but if I'm telling somebody what color to use, I would rather say, oh, what color is that? Because they want a recommendation. I could say that is Naphthol Red, PR112, or that is Cad Red Light, PR108, or that is Quinn Rose. Um, I can give a better... I can give a better um, description. In the, I added a couple of M. Graham colors to my palette. Um, I pretty much stuck with these colors from M. Graham and just replaced them as I've run out. The colors I've run out of have been like Burnt Sienna, Sap Green, uh, Yellow Ochre, let's see, Ultramarine Blue. I'm just trying to think of tubes that I've rebought over the years. I did, I think, Cad Yellow Light. That's the one I like to use a lot. Um, I added Thalo Blue Red Shade a couple of years ago and Mineral Violet. And I also stocked up on some of my M. Graham paints because Consumer Crafts, I don't know, I think it was about the time that um, Aaron Brothers went out of business. The company that owns Consumer Crafts was the company that bought the Aaron Brothers stores and the Pacatan stores, I think. And so there was like this beautiful moment where there was tons of high-end art supplies on that website for cheap. And I stocked up on some Daniel Smith and some M. Graham paints. And those are two colors I didn't have, so I didn't have space. So I just um, used a little glue dot or some poster putty and just kind of stuck those pans in there. At one point, you could see this like these little tiny little cracks. I had taken a hot glue gun and made an extra well because I needed Payne's Gray for a project and I didn't have space for it. So I just made myself a little well and I put the Payne's Gray in there, used it for my project and I peeled the glue. And over time, I've gotten a little cracking there. So I must've had a little bit of um, a thermo cracking going on there, but I, it's, it's not cracked through. Can't see it on the backside. It's fine. So let's just go through and see the colors that I have here because I did have a few people ask about what I have in my M. Graham palette. Um, as we go through, I'll also tell you what colors, if I use them a lot or if I don't, it's kind of obvious on some of them because like I've, you know, I've hit the bottom and I need to refill them. Um, Hooker's Green. Actually, this Hooker's Green is my Mary Blue and not M. Graham and it's a lovely color. I had done a, um, I had a couple wells left over and I had bought at the back of an artist magazine. They had like a six or five or six color sampler of my Mary Blue and I purchased them. So there's a couple of my Mary Blue colors in here. Cause at that time I didn't have another palette and I was just using this. And I wasn't, I couldn't have foreseen YouTube or foreseen needing to keep brands separate. I would just put everything together, which I think is really fine. There's nothing wrong with that. Um, but I do keep things a little more separate because I review products on YouTube as part of my income. Uh, and as part of my job, I guess, my business. So here we have a My Mary Blue Hooker's Green, which is a mixture of PR49 and PG7. Of course, that's really not important to know now because now they have switched over to only doing single pigments in that line of paints. So um, that's what it was at the time. I actually kind of prefer the older My Mary Blue paints to what I've tried of the newer, but I, it's probably not a big enough sample size to really speak of. We got Yellow Ochre, PY43. Ironically, the um, M. Graham yellow ochre is not my favorite yellow ochre. It lacks a bit of luminosity that I, now that I've used more brands, I will say that I would actually prefer, and this is, you'll probably rarely ever hear me say I prefer a Winsor Newton color. I would actually prefer Winsor Newton's Raw Sienna. And which is weird because I, in general, I don't love Winsor Newton's Earth Tones, but I like their Raw Sienna quite a bit. Um, but then I find the, the, I wouldn't recommend necessarily going out and buying the M. Graham yellow ochre. It's fine. There's nothing wrong with it, but I think there are more luminous choices. Uh, the next one is Raw Sienna PBR7. Um, I'm not crazy about this color either. I hardly ever use it. Then we've got Burnt Sienna PBR7. I love the Burnt Sienna. And then I love their Burnt Umber, which is also PBR7. These three are PBR7. Um, the Burnt Umber actually is probably the most versatile if you're only going to choose one brown out of this line. Um, uh, we got Raw Umber, PBR7. I don't use that very often. Van Dyke Brown, PBR6. I like Van Dyke Brown. I like that quite a bit. And that's a color that I don't reach for too often. It's got a little bit of a glossy bit. Um, these are honey-based watercolors, so you ha the, that's the reason they're also in a studio palette, because they can travel in a travel palette and not in a good way. Like if you have it up on its edge. I had this on its edge before, and I had paint just kind of dripping down, and they were fully dry. So I have to store this flat. 
Um, so if I'm going to go to a class, I'm going to put this in my paint box. I have a wooden paint box with, that this will fit flat in. I have to um, just put it in before I go. I can't store it in there, which is a bummer because having the paint box in there keeps everything from kind of like keeps a little palette from letting things fall out, but eh, that's neither here nor there. Just keep the M-grams flat. I don't recommend them in a highly humid environment for a travel paint, but they're great to re-wet. They re -wet so well otherwise. Um, so yes, we got our Van Dyke Brown. We've got a sepia. Um, that's not one I recommend. It's the one I don't use. I don't use sepia in pretty much any brand, but this was, um, I was green when I bought these and I was just like, yeah, if it's not, as long as it's not a gray or a black or a white, um, I'll buy it. I'll try it. You know, sepia, not, not a fan. Um, not even sure I'm pronouncing it right. Magenta PV19. That's a real good one. I love that. Then we have, uh, this one, I'm not so sure if this is the Quinn Rose or the Rose Matter. I believe I had both tubes and I used one up and I wasn't sure which one I refilled it with. So I like it, but <laughs> it seems to be a Rose Matter um, because it doesn't seem to have the punch of the Quinacridone, but I do, but I do like it. I'll show you here right here. Um, yeah, I'm pretty sure this is the Quinn, a Quinn Rose because it just doesn't have the punch of a... I'm sorry, I believe this is a Rose Matter, not a Quinn Rose. That's why I have a question mark there. It's just got a more delicate... It's got a more delicate feel like it's a um, natural organic pigment. So I think that PV19 may be wrong. Anyway, then we've got cadmium orange PO20. I love that color. I think it's a really useful one. Your cadmium colors tend to be a little bit more opaque, so you do want to be careful of that, but it only takes a little touch of the color to get a good color payoff. So because of that, it actually would be very transparent unless you're using it in mass tone. Then we got Cad Red Deep, which is a um, slightly bloody cooler warm red. And then we got Cad Red Light. Those both use the same pigments. The Cad Red Light is much more orangey, a much warmer color, but they're both honestly kind of warm. Then we got Naphthol Red, which is a very neutral color. I really like uh, Naphthol Red. It's a very kind of neutral fire engine red. But my favorite, probably if you could only have one red, would be the Quinn Red, PR209. It is such a crisp, transparent, clean, pure red that you could make cooler or make warmer depending on what you mix with it. Um, it's really nice. A Quinn Red and a Magenta, if you like a modern palette, I think you would really like those two as your, you could, then you could make that be your warm and your Magenta be your cool. But uh, it's a good, it's a good one. Another one I love, Permanent Alizarin Crimson PR264. That's right here. It's a gorgeous color and I love, I always love cr Alizarin Crimson, but the true Alizarin Crimson is Fugitive. This isn't as, as um, it's actually, it feels brighter than a true Alizarin Crimson and not quite as blue. It's a, it's a little bit less bloody. It's a, it's a really nice color. I like it a lot. Then we've got uh, Quinn Violet, which I call, I'll call mauve to the day I die. I'm telling you what, I always call it mauve and I think I call it mauve because Cotman actually has a really nice mauve. If you want to save some money, the Cotman mauve is actually really nice and, um, at least it used to be. I hope it still is. I have an old tube. I think it was from back when it was made in France, and it's a lovely color, very strong. I can't vouch. I, could, I probably could vouch for it if I want to go dig out my more, most recent palette, but um, yeah, it's a very strong color. It's very nice. It's a very warm violet. It's um, it's that right there. Then we have Dioxazine Purple, our Dioxazine Violet, PV23. It's and you'll notice all those Quinn Violets and Quinn Reds are all PV19. Well, not all of them, but um, like your uh, your. Quinn Rose and Quinn Violet. You'll see that, that pigment a lot, even if it's in different colorways, even if it looks different, I mean. Then we got Cerulean Blue. I use this a lot. I really like it. I do have this in my travel palette, um, so I am tempting fate a little bit, but I tend to use it up so quickly that in my travel palette doesn't sit very long in the summer. So yeah, I do have that in my travel palette, and that does get gooey, but it's such a great color for seascapes, and I do a lot of seascapes in the summer because I live in Maine, and I think we have, I heard somewhere that Maine has more, has the most coastline of any other state. Is that true? I don't know because it's so wiggly. It's not smooth. It's very wiggly. Then we have cobalt blue. That's a really nice blue. If you like a cobalt blue, that's a really good one. Ultramarine blue, I use tons of that. That's my most used color on any palette. And yeah, I use the, these, I would say I mostly would use the ultramarine and the cerulean. I don't use the cobalt that much, but it is a beautiful, it is a beautiful color. I feel like I can get the color payout much easier with ultramarine than cobalt, but, um, but if I need a softer color, that's a really good option. You don't need them both in the same palette, in my opinion. 
Then we've got Prussian Blue PB27. I really like it. I, I stopped using it. Not really stopped using it, but I don't use it as frequently. I used to use it all the time. That used to be my basic palette. My basic palette was Alizarin Crimson and Cadmium Red. For my two reds, it was Lemon Yellow and um, Cadmium Yellow Medium or Cadmium Yellow Deep for my two yellows, and it was uh, Prussian Blue and Ultramarine Blue, so Prussian being my cool and Ultramarine being my warm. But then um, I discovered Thalo Blues and how they are just, they just give you much more vibrant mixes, and I love a really vibrant palette, but if you prefer a more traditional palette, I love the Prussian Blue. They're both really good. Here's what they look like. Um, but you can see how much brighter Thalo Blue is for Prussian Blue than Prussian Blue, and they're both green leaning. So for mixing, you're going to get a better you're going to get a brighter mix with Thalo Blue, but if you like a more traditional palette, you know, your Prussian Blue, your Elizabeth Crimson, your, um, your Cadmium Red, they're just going to give you a much softer, more natural looking, uh, more natural looking palette. And uh, I think M. Graham Colors do tend to lean on a more vibrant scale than some other brands, so if you like that, I think you like these. And then I have Thalo Blue PB15-3, and then I've got Palo, Thalo Blue Red Shade, which I think is PB15-6. Mm, did I not write that down? I didn't write that down. But I believe that's PB15-6. That is uh, just a less, it's just, well, that's the red shade, and that's the regular one. Like, that's still nowhere near as warm as Ultramarine. I don't really, I don't think that's a necessary color. I still think it's leaning a little bit green compared to ultramarine, I would just use ultramarine. But if, I guess if you didn't want the granulation and you wanted a really strong blue that had less texture to it, that would be an option. Um, and it's more light fast than say like a Victoria blue or a blue lake. Then we have, and you can barely find those colors because they're so fugitive. Uh, then we have Thalo Green PG7. I really love that color. That is wonderful. You can mix it with like a, um, you can take that color you can mix it with a, like a cadmium orange and get the most gorgeous green. Um, and you, then you can mix it with all kinds of other yellows and get beautiful greens. And you're like, Lindsay, why don't you just mix blue and yellow to make your green? There's a certain vibrancy you're gonna get when you start off with a single pigment uh, green as your base and then you, you shift it. You're gonna get a more vibrant um, color. So that's why. Of course, you can mix from your primaries. There's nothing wrong with that. The, this, these are kind of, and these are very like subtle, differences that you'll notice the more you get into color theory and the more you paint. Definitely not something you need to worry about until you've mastered your split primary palette in my opinion. Um, but as you advance that's a really great color to have. The Thalo Green is a great color to have. It's cheap, it's light fast, and it is very handy as far as mixing a variety of gorgeous saturated greens. Then we have Viridian and I'm kind of a little... this is my favorite Viridian right here. Generally your Viridians are not this bright, so, and after everything came out with Daniel Smith, them um, boosting their Primatech colors with some other pigments not disclosing what's in them, I kind of started to wonder if maybe M. Graham might have some sort of, have some phthalo blue in that Viridian, just because it's so vibrant. I can't say that for a fact, but it did kind of make me wonder about that. Viridian is a slightly granulating single pigment green, PG-18. It's a, um, it's a gorgeous, it's a gorgeous green, but I, you know what? I do tend to reach for other greens before Viridian, and Viridian can be kind of pricey, so I don't think it's essential, but if you do want a Viridian, M. Graham's Viridian is the, the easiest to re-wet and nicest that I've come by, but I kind of wonder if it's easy to re-wet re because it may have something else in it. Now, I cannot, I have no, I have no way of knowing. I am not a chemist. I don't have a microscope. I don't, like, I wouldn't even know what to look for. I have no idea. That's just a hunch that I have just based on all the other Viridians I've used being a little bit less, sac being quite a bit less saturated, harder to re-wet, and just weaker in general. And also less smooth, like more gritty, so uh, take it with a grain of salt. I don't know. I'm not a scientist. Um, then we have Sap Green. Now they have changed formulations in their Sap Green, and I can't remember if this is older or newer, but this one is a combination of PG7 and PO62. Um, it's a gorgeous color, but I'm not sure. You know what? Well, I can probably see if I have a new tube of it. Let's take a look. So, excuse my shame, but this is one of my drawers of watercolor tubes. I know. I know. Don't don't comment. I know. <laughs> don't don't give me a hard time. 
Um, let me find this one is Hooker's Green. I was trying to find a newer tube of sap green. Let's see. This one is a sap green. I, I wish they did they date these. That's a PG7 PO62, but I think I've purchased another one. I think I have a newer one. Because that sale in, I hit that sale. Maybe I didn't. Maybe that was my, that might have been my purchase, my repurchase, but. All right, here, I got a brand new tube. Let's take a look at this. Let's see what we can see. What are they saying here? Uh, oh, it is a different mix. It's PG, PY101. This is PG7 and PY101. So let's do a little comparison. Let's do a little taste test. Well, we're not really going to taste it, but let's do a little comparison. So this is, this is the old one. I'm going to squirt it. I'll put it right in my palette. Oh, seriously, I'm not going to be able to open this. Uh, and I don't want to get... I got a rag here somewhere. I don't want to get, uh, I don't want to stain my sleeves yet. It's the first time I've worn this sweatshirt. It's not new though. <laughs> my daughter cleaned out her closet, obviously. I'm a sketchy hobo, so. So of course. Oh, and don't do little, okay. Do whatever you want to do with your life. But my recommendation is do not put just tiny little dabs of paint in your palette. You're gonna make your brushes work way harder than they need to. You're gonna damage your brushes. Just fill the wells up so that it's easier on your brushes, you don't have to stop and refill as often, and um, it's just a lot nicer. I do apologize for the background noise. Uh, it's summer, kids are home, and uh, I can't uh, can't promise quiet YouTube videos this time of year. Okay, we'll do a, a little bit of uh, that there. That is the new formulation. So, let me grab a piece of watercolor paper. This is probably not the world's best watercolor paper. This came in a kit, and I just noticed it was, I still had a sheet of it left. It came in like a student grade kit, but that's all right. This will do the trick for, for testing the color anyway. And grab a brush. A nice juicy one will get one of my big honking brushes. All right, this is the newer formulation. You know what? I'm thinking it's different. I'm thinking it actually looks a little different. So this is new. Let's uh, I'm gonna be bummed if I if it's really that different. That's gonna be a drag. Taking the old from a wet from the new, the uh, wet. Now I'm kind of wondering, do I have even an older version of that in there? Let's see what's in the pan itself. I'll try to get some that's not the new. You know what? I bet they've changed more than once. Cause look, doesn't that like look a little bit brighter? Doesn't that look a little bit brighter, that middle one? Hmm. I don't know. I don't know what will show up on camera, but the old, old one, I think I like the old, old one and the new, old one, and the new one, and the medium old one, maybe not as much. Hmm. That's one that was dried down in my pan. I like that. I like that one better, I think. All right. I'm not going to worry about it. I'm going to put that in there, though, because I'm not going to waste it. You kidding, you kidding me? And you know that Pike palette I showed you earlier? <laughs> I probably have like four colors or more in some of those wells because when I got it secondhand, it had some paint in it. And I just refilled as, as need be and I just went close, I eyeballed it. So I like that one the best. That was old, old M. Graham because that would have been two tubes ago. Three tubes ago. That would have been three tubes ago there. That's two tubes ago. And that's a brand new tube that I haven't even that I haven't opened yet. That I just opened to get a little sample out. Hmm. I like this one better than the two tubes ago, though. There you have it. Unscientific, but curiosity. Curiosity killed the cat. Satisfaction brought him back. Uh, then we have uh, Hooker's Green, which is a mix of oh look at this. 
The hooker's green is a mix of PG7 and PY110, so that's like the new, that's like the new version of sap green. So unless I grab the wrong color, I grab the hooker's green? Nope, that's sap green. Okay, let's look at the old hooker's green next to the new, that looks different. Wait, make sure that's, yep, yeah, that's, yeah, the hooker's green though. What? It says PG7, PY, no, PG7, PY110. That's the same as what we have in the new. It looks like it's got some blue in it. Doesn't it even look like it might have some Prussian blue in it. Because if we look at um, that's hooker's green, and that's the these these two have the same exact pigments, which isn't uncommon to have paints use the same pigments be a little bit different because of the proportions and how they're treated and whatnot. But let's just take that PG PG seven. Well, you know that is pretty blue. That is quite blue. I don't have PY one one ten on this palette, so I don't think I do. Oh, I do. It's Gamboge. Let's take it. Let's mix it up. Gamboge PY110. They have changed that. I think it's a mix now. I'm thinking it's a mix now. I don't have a newer tube of it. I don't think. I can look if you want me to. I got my I got my yellows over there. I hopefully all the yellows are in there. All right. Let's take that. Let's add in our thalo green. That's quite fresh. That's refreshing. Let's take a little bit more of the gamboge. Oh, that is gorgeous though. Look at that. Hmm. I wonder why that color almost has a little bit of um duller duller appearance than the mix of the same two pigments. Yeah, that's probably how they how they milled it. But uh, but that's interesting. Now I'm curious to see if I have a, a new version of the of Gamboge. If I, I don't know if I'm buying another tube of that. Let me see. Do I? Oh, I do. I do. This is this is um, Gamboge. Now they're using PY151 and PO62. Let's compare our old and new Gamboge. Old and new Gamboge. <laughs> I think that was probably new Gamboge too. I'm just going to do a little squirt over here. Not a little squirt. I'm gonna just going to put some back there. Because it's the same color. I mean, I am not one of these people that need to go hunt down rare paints. Let me tell you that. Let's do another old and new. Oh, let's just use another piece of paper because this is pretty lightweight paper. Um, this is old and new. I'm going to use a smaller brush though because I'm getting way too much water. Okay, so this is the old one. I did not get fresh water, so like last week's water there sitting on my table. There's the old. Let's look and see what the newer version looks like. And who knows, it could have been changed since then because I, like I said, I don't know when I bought the, I bought them from Consumer Crafts when they had that big like kind of sale from, I think from that store going out of business. So, uh, so this is definitely richer looking. It's, it's warmer. It's, um, it's also fresh from the tube, but it does appear to be a little bit more orangey than the older version. I don't think it's bad. I just think it's like good to know if you're used to that and you get a new tube. Um, so there has been a few colors that I know that has that I can show you from my tubes that has changed over the years, but it's been 20 years. So I don't know. That's probably on par. Other, other companies have done that too. I still like it. I still think they're, they're good paints. It doesn't really bother me that much. All right. So then after hooker's green, we have, I'm going to get my swatches out. We have permanent green light, and that's um, PG7 and PY151, which is the new uh, Gamboge, the new color they're using for Gamboge plus our Thalo green. So, you know, you can see if you had that Thalo green, right, you could omit these other greens and mix them yourself. 
if you wanted to. So that's just that's that's why I really like the phthalo green. That's why I recommend it. I think it's a little maybe tricky for a beginner to work with, but once you once you get down the color theory down and you want to have a really versatile palette and maybe pair it down to fewer colors, you can put the phthalo green in there. Um, have the, your split primary. Have a phthalo green. Have a burnt umber or a burnt sienna, a yellow ochre if you want to. You don't really even need a yellow ochre. You can dull down your yellows, but I like a yellow ochre. I actually like a sap green too, but that phthalo green is so versatile and it's so strong and it wears so slowly that in a travel palette, um, it would take you a long way. You know, you wouldn't have to have that much. You're going on a trip or whatnot and you want to get the most bang for your buck. Thalo blue, uh, thalo green is going to get, anything thalo, honestly, is going to give you a lot of bang for your buck. And then we have uh, Cadmium Yellow Light PY35. Sometimes it's called Cadmium Yellow Lemon. It's just a really cool version of that color. Then you have Cadmium Yellow, which is uh, a warm yellow. So I just use those two colors mainly for my yellows. Yellow is, um, these are fairly opaque too. So that is something you want to think about if you want to have those those yellows in there. But you can mix really beautiful colors with those yellows. Uh, but if you don't want to have cadmium in your kit, then I totally understand that. And you might want to go with like a, a Hunts Yellow Light and a Gamboge or something like that. So you can get those variations. You're really not going to beat cadmium colors for light fastness though. And there has been some talk about Hunts Yellow Light being less light fast today than it was 20 years ago or more. So just something to consider. And then I've got those two My Mary Blue colors, the My Mary Permanent Green Light and the My Mary Hooker's Green, which is honestly a gorgeous, uh, gorgeous, vibrant, really luminous color. But that has changed because they switched over to single pigment colors. So and that's what's in my M Grand palette. And uh, that was kind of fun. That was fun to compare some of the newer and older pigments. I really um, like this line of paint and I loved how affordable it was when I purchased it. Honestly, I can't tell you right now what it costs. Um, it's been a while since I've ordered a tube off Blick. I still think it was less than Daniel Smith, but um, but I couldn't swear right now. I haven't, uh, I haven't compared prices in a while. I know prices have gone up for certain things. But they are USA made. They're a great paint. There you absolutely no cracking in pans because of the honey that's in there. But also not great for storing it on its side or traveling with it, or if you're in a really humid area. Some people have said that honey-based paints will mold on them. I've never had that experience, even though I'm in Maine, which is humid in the summer, and my studio's in the basement, so it's gonna be more humid than um, than some other places. I've never had an issue with any molding with the colors that I have in my palette, but I don't have all the colors, so. Maybe there's something that I don't, um, that I'm not aware of, but like with some of the other colors, but I really find it to be a trustworthy brand and very high quality and they're my favorites, but they might be my favorites because they were my first. I don't know. You have to, uh, you have to make the choice on what to add to your palette on your own, but at least, you know, going through some of the colors that I think are really, are really gorgeous and ones to consider picking up. I love their Cerulean Blue. They're Viridian. If you want a Viridian, I feel like it's the easiest to rewet. Uh, I love their cadmium colors. I they're Quin Red. I really think that's nice. I love their permanent alizarin crimson. And but of course, you know, keep in mind that that most of these palettes, in my paints in my palette are older. So if they've changed pigments, I don't think their qualities change. The quality seems to be the same. But if they've changed some of the pigments, the color could be slightly different. And um, maybe I wouldn't recommend it anymore. I don't know. But I do recommend the paint in general. I think it's really, really delightful paint. So there you have it. I hope you found this useful. Please give me a thumbs up if you enjoy these kind of deep dives into a paint line. I haven't reviewed this paint. Like I said, I tend not to review products that I've had for a really long time because I don't know if they're still the same quality. Um, generally, legacy brands, like, you know, your brand name artist professional paint don't change that much over the years. Not like the student grade stuff or the, um, the student grade stuff that's not made by a major paint manufacturer. I feel like those can change from batch to batch. They change factories. You just have, it's a wild west. You have no idea what's going on with those. You'll get a lucky, you know, a lucky set. The quality's great, but then it could change in six months. So you have to really be careful when you're buying those that, you know, you're getting something that is still good, but you can trust and Graham, you can trust a lot of the name brand paints, to be honest, to still be high quality. But there you have it. This was fun. Thanks for watching. And until next time, happy crafting. Bye.